Okay, hi, my name is Kin, and today I'm going to, I'm going to be talking about testing. Um, just a side, think of it as an um, kind of like a grocery shopping adventure. If you see something that you like, grab and take it. If not, just leave it, leave it on the shelf. So today I want to talk about um, why do we write tests? Why do you even care about it? Why am I here talking instead of sitting down? Um, what are the different types of tests? And lastly, a concept that all of you should be familiar with now, and it's called test-driven development. And I want to dive a little bit deeper into that. So I want to talk about why do we write tests, right? Because theoretically, we don't, we don't need to do that, right? We could just have someone, every time that someone have a PR, you could just have someone on your team sit there and run a sequence of code, set up the environment, and test whether or not a program works, right? But then, if you think about it, over a course of a project or an application, there are so many PRs. And then if, you have, if you're going to dedicate people to do that, <laughs> um, you're just going to be wasting a lot of manpower. So, um, so the reason why we write tests is you know, simply because it's easier than running an application. That's basically what it is. And at, at any given time, if you have written tests, you could quickly sort out whether or not a particular part of your application is working or not, as opposed to merely guessing because there is no merge conflict. doesn't necessarily mean that an application is running perfectly the way that you expect it to be. So this is called the pyramid of tests. And um, the so this here talks about the main three different types of tests that you see. I'm not including the dog in the lower right-hand corner. Um, so in the vertical axis, this is the component of tests. And in the horizontal axis, this is the number of tests that um, users should be writing. So if we were to start from the bottom, the, the bottom is called unit test. What unit test is, it is um, you're testing each individual module in isolation, um, whether or not the logic is working what you expect it to be. And with integration testing, you'll be testing to see whether or not different modules could talk to each other and are compatible with each other. And lastly, with acceptance testing, you'll be testing, basically you're simulating a user experience. So you're putting the whole application as one unit under test. And what that means is most of the time you are going to, not most of the time, but um, you could use software like Cecilium where you're creating a virtual DOM and then and then you are telling exactly how far should, how many pixels the mouse should move and what it clicks on and then see if the expected behavior is what you expect the program to show. So now, my question is, if testing is so important, why aren't people writing it? Right, and I think that's something to talk about. Because everyone seems to sort of know the benefit of it. And when I ask people this question, these are some of the reply that I usually get. Um, I put the answer, don't know how to write tests in the middle, right in the center. And I think that answer really resonates with me. Because for, for a really long time, I, I thought that I don't write tests because I simply don't know how to write tests. And it does make sense up to a certain extent. But then as I work in more ev involved projects, work in different teams, I start to realize that not writing tests because I simply don't know how to write tests, I feel like that is not the reason why I'm not writing tests. I feel like that is more of a, of a result, of a, of, a, of a deeper mindset that is in my blind spot. And that blind spot is, what I think is really is, I don't write tests because I simply don't care enough to write them. I simply don't view it as enough, as important as a framework such as Angular, React, or an, an, another language like Java, Elixir. Because truth of the matter is, we all could learn, right? I wasn't born knowing JavaScript. 
I wasn't born knowing Angular. I wasn't born knowing React. Right? <laughs> and in full stack, you see teams that have no experience with React, and yet in three weeks, they could finish a capstone using React. So it's not that they don't know how to write tests, and it's not that they don't know the syntax of it. It's more of the idea that it's not as important as learning a framework. And I think that is an, an idea that I you know, offered to you guys to really think about. Um, so now let's say that you know, you're interested in writing tests, right? So now how do you get started in it? Because it's, it's a really deep hole. It's a huge rabbit hole. And um, it's a really deep topic. And if you give me 10 years, I don't think I could cover it all. So today I want to just give a general concept of, of um, practice that you could do to get your feet wet into utilizing tests so then it's not a scary beast for you. So the concept I want to introduce is called test-driven development. And the idea be behind test-driven development is that um, you're going to write small assumptions and then you're going to write production codes and then so on and so forth. And the principle behind it is that you're going to write, the result of it is usually um, is usually that there will be a lot more units in your production code, and, th and those small units will be, will be more effective. And some other advantage of using test-driven development is that it really forces you to write testable code. Because a lot of times, as developer, because we don't test the code that we write, and if we're not testing our own code, we have no idea how other people are going to test it. So a lot of times, let's say for arbitrary example, if I have four functions, right, I might have, I might have like, by the time I get to function D, if I'm really hacking into it with, without thinking of how am I going to test this, it might, like the argument that comes into function D might be the result of function A and plus function B and then pipe into function C and then somehow get into function D. But if someone were to test that, that has a lot of dependencies. And that has a lot of variance. It's really hard to control. How do you even set that rare environment up? And a real life example is, if I were to go to a convenience store right now, I could buy a bag of M&Ms and I could just pay cash. Or I could hand a cashier um, my wallet and be like, take the money out of it. Right? And yet, we find it funny, but a lot of times when we write code, that's what we do. And also, it is a, a really efficient way to really think about what is the module trying to do? What is the output and the input of the modules before you even start writing any production codes behind it? And, and um, another example is that if, if you don't know how to write, if you don't know what to test for in the code that you're writing, I think to some extent, I don't think you understand 100% what the, what the code is you're trying to write and what, the whole, what is the problem that you're trying to solve in that particular module if you, cannot, if you don't know what to test for in the particular code. And lastly, as I mentioned before, um, test-driven development, you know, the result of it is usually there will be a lot smaller units um, in a particular module. And with smaller unit, most of the time, it, um, people are less attached to the code that they're writing. So if, let's say if there is uh, 50 lines of code, if I have um, five functions that takes up 10 lines each, as opposed to one function that takes up 50 lines, I am a lot more happy changing, changing one function in that, in that 50 lines of code, as opposed to changing something within that one function that has, that has 50 lines of code. I think that's just, human nature. We always get attached to the code we write. So now, within testing, there's always, always three phrases of test. And it is arrange, act, and assert. Arrange basically means setting up the environment. Act is doing the things that you want to observe, the behavior that you want to observe. And then lastly, assert, which is, which is Checking the behavior that you're expected to see, making sure that it is indeed 
happening. So now, uh, don't be scared. I know this is code. Um, this is actually really simple Jasmine code that I that I wrote that I wrote um, to test a calculator function that I made. Um, it's not that it's not that scary. I mean, we all pass our checkpoint. So, in here, I want to point out something that whenever you see a nested describe block, this is called an example group. And then, and here, this is called a range, right? First, we are setting up our environment. So we are creating, we're creating a new calculator. And then we are acting, right? We are invoking the method called add within the calculator, and we are passing it, we're setting it to the variable called result. And lastly, we are asserting it to make sure, making sure that it is, it is indeed 12. And then um, if we are doing test-driven development, then the next thing I'll do is probably add subtraction, next subtraction after that, and then write subtraction methods. Um, so just to, just to do a quick recap on um, what, I'm gonna, what I talked about today is that a lot of times, right, we think about we don't write tests because we don't know syntactically what to test for. Um, we don't know, we don't test because we don't know how to write tests. But at the end of the day, if someone points a gun in my head, and tell me to write test. I'm going to ask Mr. Google. Right? We are all programmers. We're really good at Googling. And I think that we'll figure it out. And at the same time, um, lower your threshold into writing test. Because I, I, I think, I'll speak for myself. When I first started writing tests, I was like, I'm going to write this grand new test that is like really important to my, to my application. Right? But then if I think about it, I have been writing production code for probably over half a year now. But then, if, but realistically speaking, how, how much experience do I have with testing? Not as much, not nearly as much. So then it doesn't really make sense because I can't expect myself to write my first line of, I mean, to write my first JavaScript program using like all this perfect refactoring and recursion and, and, and all, that, all that shiny stuff. So um, start small. And that's my presentation today. And these are my resources. I got it from Frontend Master. I think they are a good site. And any questions? <laughs>